guys, this is a Tamex air handler. And uh, right there, this is not set up for communications. It's just, we just got a single stage 16 sear heat pump outside. Um, so this is wired up for 24 volts, not communicating. There's another thing you can do with that Milwaukee light. You can just hang that thing on a pipe. Give yourself plenty of light. Get you one of those. Anyway, the backstory on this was defrost problems in defrost cycle. The unit would run fine in heating. It would heat fine, but when it would go in defrost cycle, it would pump down in low pressure when it switched into cooling, obviously that's what defrost is. The system switches into air conditioning, cycles on your heat strips to blank out that cold air. While it's running in defrost, takes heat from inside the house, brings it out, warms the outdoor coil so it doesn't freeze. Uh, when this one was going into defrost cycle, it would pump down on the low side. There was a problem. This has a stepper motor and an EEV in it, not a regular TXV. So what was going on is just in you know cold weather when it was colder maybe below 45 when this thing would defrost and once in a while i ran it and tested it i didn't get any video footage on that i'm sorry about that it was raining that day but it sometimes it would it would snap out of defrost before it got down low enough to trip the low pressure switch outside and that was just because it was milder weather. It wasn't defrosting very long. Um, on the cold nights during the snowy weather we had a couple of weeks ago and some 20 degree weather. And there's one of those little damn clips. And every time you take one of these doors off, I don't know why they don't make that a little place in there where that thing won't fall out. But anyway, another piss poor design. So anyway, but in the cold weather, when it stayed in defrost longer, it would end up tripping low pressure and then it, when it would come back on the pressures were out of whack it, it just and it, what it was is i was hooked up on the app last time i was here and this thing was the stepper motor has 500 positions 500 open and down to zero close that kind of thing anywhere in between this thing and i may have took a screenshot i'll have to see if i've got it and put it up on this video But it would show me that the stepper motor was at position 63,644, which I knew was just way out of whack. And I got to remember, that's for the hot water heater. That one back there <laughs> is the one for the air handler. So let me get that one pulled out. I did that last time. And then my ass labeled them and still pulled out the wrong one. Good figure. Anyway. So I was like, there's no way, because I was coming back then with the board to put in it. And I put that board in it and it still did it. And the problem ended up being the stepper motor back here on this thing, on the EEV, the stepper motor. And you can see that right back there. I don't know how good the light is, but that's your stepper motor and your EEV. But anyway. The stepper motor owned out fine, 46 ohms all the way around on all the legs. But it was still doing that. So I called tech support and they had never heard of it or seen it either. So I decided to go get a stepper motor and that fixed the problem. So for whatever reason, the stepper motor, when this thing was going into cooling, was shutting down the EEV. Even though it tested good, it still wasn't working right. So keep that in mind. Um, and I just told her as a precaution just to make her feel better because this unit has only been installed for about eight months at this point that I would come back with another control board. She's just real peculiar and I can't blame her to tell you the truth. It took about three times for us coming out here to find a problem and even tech support had never seen that. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go into replacing this board. And then I'm going to show you how you set one of these up on the train link app. Um, there's no dip switches. I mean, there's a couple right here, but they're not used in this situation. But 
This is the one you got the button, you turn on the Bluetooth, and then you got the app on your phone. And then you go through the app and set it up. Uh, it's not communicating, so I can't do it at the thermostat. So if it was a communicating unit, I could do it at the thermostat. But in this situation, you do it here on the app. And then there's another way to do it with the buttons and a light flashing. And you got steps and button pushes and all that kind of aggravating mess, which is a pain in the ass, to be honest. Uh, be perfectly fine if I'd never had to see one of these things again. It's, it's just it, every year the technology and the crap they do to these things is just worse and worse and worse, in my opinion. But anyway, we're going to get this board swapped out. And then I'm going to show you how to set this thing up on the uh, Train Link app. All right, so I've got the old board out. I'll put the new one in. Like I said, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I'm just, it's under warranty. It's installed warranty on top of that. So it's not costing her anything. And it just to make her feel a little bit better. And as a precaution, we'll go ahead and pop another one in there. It's not going to hurt anything. And I don't think the old motor, the old stepper motor being plugged to this board was going to cause any kind of a long-term problem with this control board i just just to make her feel better she was you know no more spends you know, 11 twelve thousand dollars getting the system replaced and seven months after it was installed it doesn't work like it's supposed to and it's having problems and you know you just you do what you gotta do you know, keep them happy so it's not a big deal well sometimes it is but i ain't getting into that conversation about, about homeowners being upset that's for another video down the road but anyway we will get this board in and then i will show you how to set this thing up it's pretty much plug and play everything has a place to go all right guys notice a quick edit i had to flip the board around <laughs> i stuck it in backwards i think i've done that a couple of times on video anyway to get everything to match up and to reach minimal length in these harnesses so Anyway, it's pretty much just plug and play for all the wires on the board or your, your terminals here. And if it doesn't fit, it will not go in. So there's only one place that these plugs will fit and plug back into. So you really can't mess that up. What I do like is the fact that the thermostat wiring you don't have to disconnect each individual thermostat wire the wire nuts and all that it does have a harness that plugs in right here if you can see that and then all your wires are connected back right there so yeah i guess they did think a little bit on that one which the, most of the tam air handlers in the last few years have had that option anyway so anyway so we've got all that back and i'm going to show you how to set this thing up what i am going to do is i am going to disconnect our 24 volts from the thermostat because i just don't want this thing to come on while i'm doing this i didn't turn our thermostat off and i don't know what it's set to so i'm going to disconnect that temporarily I'm just basically disconnecting the float switch and then we're going to put the disconnect back in over here and obviously i need to put the one back in for the hot water heater that's the stepper motor going through a set and a reset process 
it'll do it every time you power it off and power it on. So what you got to do is you'll go into this train diagnostics app right there. Anyway, tap on that and then you'll connect. You gotta log in, you gotta have a comfort site account, be a train dealer. If you're gonna get in on all the communicating stuff, you can't get into it without having your username and password. 24 volt systems, you just hit connect to 24 volt equipment. But there's a little button right here that you're gonna push to turn on the Bluetooth and it'll allow access for 24 hours. So I'm gonna hit that button, see that red light start to flash. And we're going to connect to 24 volts. Hit find equipment. And then there's our air handler right there. And we're going to tap on that. And wait for it to connect. And we'll turn this light away from the phone temporarily that might be giving you some glare all right we're gonna set the model number and then there's a barcode right over here on the air handler and we're gonna tap scan barcode and scan that barcode and now our model and serial number will pop up for the unit, hit next, complete setup, and then we're gonna configure the outdoor unit right here. And our outdoor unit is a heat pump. And then we're gonna set our capacity. It is a two and a half ton heat pump. And then how many stages? One compressor, one stage. Our outdoor unit is configured. And then we're going to do the indoor heat. It already picked that up. So we're good on that. We're going to configure the airflow. We're going to do 400 CFM per ton on cooling. We're going to do 400 on heating. We're going to leave that right where it's at. And then there are no external switches connected. And then there are no accessories connected. And that's pretty much it for the 24 volt setup. And then in this situation, the outdoor unit's not communicating. And that's, that's really about all you're going to do. Set up your outdoor unit tonnage for the air handler. And then your CFMs per ton on it. Your heat strips, things like that. And that's, that's really it, guys. Now, the XV system, fully communicating indoor and outdoor. There's a lot of stuff in there. So you gotta be careful what you mess with and what you set up on it but anyway that's kind of how you set that up so if you're not familiar with these and you run into that everything I just showed you is in the manual with the air handler if uh, whoever installed it was nice enough to leave it for you but uh, anyway, I'm going to power this thing up and we're going to run it and we're going to test the defrost cycle, which I know it probably works okay because the other problem was actually resolved with the stepper motor being replaced. Just doing this as a precaution.